So I would like to um, offer some help to the transgenders as well as pose a question to everybody. But first, the help. Uh, to the transgenders out there, um, I confess there's actually been some times where I have uh, wondered about my own gender. But when I do, I go back to the standard since time immemorial of what is a man and what is a woman. And that is the part you're born with. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in this day and age, there's a second one, and that is your... Your, the DNA that, that gives you those parts. The solution to the problem is not to pretend that you're the wrong gender or keep or to act on that belief. Um, nor, and it certainly is not the solution for everybody else to do the same. The solution is not to succumb to the problem. It's to fix the problem. Uh, another bit of help I can give uh, an old psychologist taught me something, and, that it, and it works for addiction, it works for anxiety, and it works for depression. And it might work for uh, uh, transgenderism and maybe even homosexuality. But that is, tune in. Why do you feel the way you do? And, at that, and then you meet the need. Especially if you're an addict. Because, I mean, that's what addiction is. It's somebody trying to meet a need and they can't, probably because they're fooled into thinking that they've done so, if only for a very short time. Um, so, tune in. Why do you think that you're the wrong gender? I've been told this is how transgenders think, uh, not just uh, from conservatives, but also uh, by word of mouth, from a tr uh, down the telephone line, from a transgender. Why do you think you're the wrong gender? I don't know what reasons there be uh, for uh, men who think you are women. Maybe your mother dressed you, put you in a dress, and that was traumatic to you. Or maybe, maybe you were bullied. I don't know. Um, and there could be some anxiety as part of it. And if there's some trauma, then this could be painful. This could be really painful, and, and you'll you you'll probably need help like professional help. But again, the solution is to fix the problem, not to succumb to it. And now the question, actually before I get to the question, I'll finish that thought, which is, then meet the need. If if you found that, it's be, you, that you think you're the wrong gender because you got dressed in the wrong clothes when you were uh, a baby, uh, then get over it. I don't know how you do it. You may need a, a counselor to tell you how to do that. But get, but get somehow get past that. Meet the need. In other words, what, how, why, however, or why ever you feel like you're the wrong gender, tune in, and meet and meet that need. But don't just get, but don't succumb to the problem. That is not the solution. The solution is to solve the problem. And now the question I want to pose to everybody: Who convinced us that the solution? was to succumb to the problem rather than fix it. And also, how did they do it? To answer the first one, I don't know anybody specifically, though I have guesses, but it's probably the, probably those who are trying to create a, a, a safety or security or, or support system for them to um, uh, continue thinking that they're the wrong gender just because it's easy, or it's somebody else either... Um, oh, a homosexually active, or, um, or it could even be none of those. It could be entirely somebody else who benefits from the standards of men and women and morality being destroyed, so that they can continue in their own actions, or maybe to satisfy a grudge against maybe a uh, overly strict parent. I don't know. Those are, I think, some pretty good guesses. So look for those people, especially the ones in power as I think they're responsible for, the, for convincing us that the solution to a transgender's problem is to succumb to it, basically to say, yeah, whatever, rather than, mm, no, you're not. And how did they do it? Well, because when you're, I mean, back in like in the early 2000s, if somebody says, if a man, if a boy says, I'm a girl, you're like, what? And you're, pr and, okay. When, and when you're in high school or even middle school, you're probably going you're, you're to voice your opinion. 
and basically say, uh, no, you're not, and I don't, you might even, you might be a jerk about it, you, you might be nice, but you're probably not going to, but you're probably not going to withhold your opinion. And, and your opinion of that is certainly, uh, uh, very, certainly disapproving, probably very strongly. And so they've probably just, dis just convinced us that that's discrimination. <clears throat> Sorry. Maybe it's discrimination based on the kindness with which you treat them because of it, or maybe not. But it's not discrimination based just because you disagree and you voice it. So, an invita so if, if you have any other insight as to who it is, comment in the comment section below, and let's um, call him by the right gender, kindly, as, kindly and as tough lovingly it would be better as we can.